Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we are going through the entire book of Revelation, and we're all the way to Revelation chapter 8. So you're more than welcome to watch from this point on, or maybe you know that uh, the portion you want to study is uh, in today's title, that's fine. Or you can just go back and start watching from the very beginning. Uh, this is only like the 32nd or 33rd video that we've made and all the videos are roughly uh, a couple minutes long. Some of them are 10 minutes or a little bit more, but we try not to go over 10 minutes. Just trying to make everything uh, nice and small, compact, so that you can watch it you know, in a sitting and just feel like you got some study, right? You got some inspiration and uh, you can wait until the next time. And we don't overwhelm you with a whole bunch of revelation information. Because I think sometimes the book can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming, it can be taxing on the senses. And uh, it, if it's difficult to get through, then we avoid it. And we don't want to avoid it because it is God's word, right? It is God's word. And so we should know this book as well as any other book, and we shouldn't be afraid. Revelation chapter 8, uh, we were talking about uh, the angel filling the censer in heaven with fire and blood and throwing that directly at the earth and burning the earth. We're talking about God's wrath, God's wrath being poured out on those who had rebelled. And so Revelation continues in verse 6. Now the seven angels, that's key, there's seven angels, seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared to blow them. Now we're going to go through each one of the trumpets, each one of the angels, and we'll get through a couple today. Uh, the first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire, mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Fire mixed with blood? Yuck. I mean, it sounds terrible. It sounds horrible, right? And it burns up a third of the earth just on fire, right? Verse 8 says, The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a giant mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So the oceans destroyed, turned to blood, right? Just like God's wrath that poured out on Egypt. You know, when you read the story in Exodus about uh, Moses and the Israelites, we know that God turned the rivers of Egypt into blood. And we always think about that story from the perspective of the Israelites, right? God's chosen people, God saves the Israelites. But in that same story, God punishes the Egyptians. God does horrible things to the Egyptian people. God pours out his wrath on the Egyptians. And this is kind of what we're seeing now. You know, these same kind of Old Testament biblical judgments. Verse 10 says, The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch. And it fell on the third of the rivers and on springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. A third of the waters became wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. Now, this is probably a meteor, right? A meteor. And wormwood would be another uh, way of describing poison, okay? So something hits the earth, and the drinking water all becomes poisonous. People don't realize it, they drink it, and of course they die. Verse 12 says, The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. Now the earth is dark. Everything is burning. Can you imagine not having uh, the full illumination of the sun, or the full illumination of the moon, or the the full illumination of the stars in the sky, but the illumination that was coming from the earth was fire, right? The night sky is dark and the, and the earth is being lit by fire. Fire and hail and blood 
that was thrown from heaven. There's people dying everywhere. There's no water to drink. It's dark. This is a horrible scene. It's a horrible scene. You know, there's people that say, oh, I hope I'm there. I hope I'm there when you get yours. I hope I'm, I hope I'm alive to see these people punished and, and for them to get what they deserve. We, we will not want to see this. Nobody will want to witness this. This will be horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. No water to drink. Everything's on fire. The sky is turned black. The rivers are turned blood. The trumpets blow. And God pours out his wrath on the world. Seven trumpets, seven angels. And you notice that as each trumpet blows, a little piece more of creation is destroyed. Sometimes we talk about how revelation is hard to understand, but if we just apply some reason, some logic, some things that we already know, like uh, seven things that took place concerning the world, well, the earth was created in seven days, right? In Genesis, God created the world in seven days. Well, now God's uncreating the world in seven trumpets, right? With each trumpet, a different aspect of creation is destroyed. In the book of Genesis, on each day, a different aspect of creation was built. So as God created the world, God is now trashing the world, cr crumpling the world up, like a piece of paper and throwing it in the garbage. Which, I mean, is sad. There's not a lot of talk about people dying uh, in, these, in these verses. I mean, obviously we know that death comes from these verses, but most of this is the destruction of the earth, right? Our planet, our home, it's, it's being destroyed. And it's sad because, you know, when you take those moments and you look at creation and you look at the world, you do notice that it is beautiful. There are many beautiful things about the world. And if you've ever traveled or been to other countries or seen some of the wonders of the world, you do stop and it takes your breath away. And you do realize just how beautiful the world is. Or if you ever watch one of those nature shows, or maybe you live in a place where you get to see animals uh, more than most. Seeing elk and deer grizzly bears, going to the zoo and seeing giraffes and lions and elephants. These things take your breath away. Seeing sharks, whales, jellyfish, seahorses, right? They, they catch your breath because they're so beautiful. Seeing a, a solid blue sky with clouds. Seeing rain spill down from the sky. Seeing um, uh, just wind move trees and leaves, smelling fresh air, standing on top of a mountain, standing at the bottom of a mountain, looking out over the ocean. These things are all breathtaking. They're captivating. And maybe you've seen them firsthand. Maybe you've only seen them in books. Maybe you wished there were places that you could see. You know, this is God's creation. It's, it's handiwork. There are things that he made. You better hurry. <laughs> you better hurry and take in those sights, those places that you've always wanted to see, those sights that you've always wanted to see. We, we should hurry and see them. And when we see them, we should stop and respect them. We should stop and admire them and give praise and glory and to God for making them. Because the Bible says one day it'll all be gone. One day it'll all be on fire. One day it'll be covered in darkness and blood and death. So for now, in my life, you know, when I see some beautiful picturesque scene or if I see some incredible animals or I see nature or I see mountains or I see oceans, I need to stop in that moment and I just need to give God all the glory. For every person who says that the world was an accident or that there was the big bang or that the earth was created in a cloud of dust or that all of this came from mother nature. For every person that preaches evolution, we need more Christians giving glory to God for his beautiful creation, for his majesty, for the beauty of this world. 
And when I'm out on nature, when I'm out in nature, when I'm out looking around, or I'm standing at those ocean scenes or those beach scenes, or if I'm out camping, I need to stop and look at it. I need to take it all in. I need to see everything. I need to put my phone down, put those screens of my life down, and I need to stare at God's handiwork, at his creation, and just admire it. Admire his beauty. Admire the world, because one day it'll all be gone. One day the mountains will crumble. One day the trees will be on fire. God's wrath will be poured out. Earth is my home. I mean, albeit it's my temporary home, and I look forward to my forever home in heaven, but for now, this is my home. And it's good. It is good. The Bible says in Genesis that when God made the world, he said it was good. He said it was good. So it's good. So I think for as long as we have it, we should thank God for it. And we should take care of it. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.